Shut up, Smarks. Ray Ross Redux. No, I won't tap out. I won't tap out. All of you butthurt suck. Just stop watching Raw. Stop watching Raw. If you want to uh, check out the story I'm about to read from, pop on over to the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page and click on like if you want to. And scroll on down to McIntyre Completes Journey Home to WWE as brought to us by TheWig.com. That's Wig with Nate for some reason. Kneeling inside the ring, World Wrestling Entertainment NXT Championship belt in his hands. A ravenous and satisfied Brooklyn crowd still screaming with satisfaction and sweat running down his face. Drew McIntyre could hear nothing. Those cheers were drowned out by thoughts. Thoughts of his wife and their three-year journey of rediscovery. Thoughts of hundreds of thousands of miles traveled. Thoughts of the many lonely nights on the road and the hotel rooms the world over. Thoughts of that day in June 2014 when his lifelong dream job was taken away from him. As he stared at the championship, oblivious to everything around him, his world felt right again. The photograph of me there on my knees looking at the title, that pretty much says it all, McIntyre said in a telephone interview promoting his coming appearances in St. Catharines and Toronto this weekend. All the hard work over the past few years and busting my ass, the physical and mental toll, his voice, complete with a strong Scottish accent, trails off. I was the busiest wrestler in the world, and I wasn't home a lot. I was traveling through the UK, and every two, three weeks, and uh, these international flights nonstop, and I was seeing my wife once, twice a month, if that. His spouse was his biggest supporter. She was encouraging me, pushing me, pushing me to be the best, he said, gratitude evident in his words. That was very tough on me, very tough on her, but it was all part of helping the business and helping build my family's future. For a few seconds in Brooklyn, time stood still. I think it's probably a good spot right there to leave it. So if you want to read the rest of that story, knock yourself out, go right on ahead. The Club Kayfabe Creative Community. Bringing together creative people from all walks of life and giving them a platform to show off their talents. Podcasters, artists, cosplayers, authors. Check out all the information about Club K Fabe Creative Community at ckcconline.com. So, uh, next is not really so much of a story, it's uh, a link to a podcast. Uh, which recently featured IWGP heavyweight champion uh, Kazushika Okada speaking on his uh, PWI Top 500 listing, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and more. And you can check out that podcast after this show, hopefully, uh, if you're you know polite in any way, uh, by going over to the uh, CHMRS Ring Rust Facebook page. Uh, click on like if you haven't already. And, uh, check out that link. You're listening to Ring Rust Productions on Gerbronology TV. Want to follow along the story I'm about to read from? Pop on over to the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page. Click on link if you haven't already and scroll on down to Jinder Mahal has surpassed some of the most iconic names in WWE history. For all you butthurts out there. Brought to us by popculture.com. And the summer of Jinder Mahal has made history. If he makes it to Hell in the Cell as WWE Champion, and in the opinion of the author, he will, then his reign will officially become lucrative. Since becoming champion back in May, Mahal has successfully defended his title at three consecutive pay-per-views. His reign as champion has spanned exactly 109 days. So what you say? Well, this dominant summer has him zooming by some legendary names in WWE history who never held a WWE championship as long as the modern-day Maharaja. Here's a short list. Mahal has already jumped in his lengthy run. Chris Jericho, who held the title for 98 days. Rick Flair, who held the title for 77 days. We're talking the WWE title now. Edge, who held the title for 76 days. And Mankind, who held this title for 26 days. Think that's impressive? 
Well, if Jinder does indeed hold on to his WWE Championship until October 8th, Hell in a Cell, it'll make 139 days. Such a run will put him above such of the greatest names in the history of WWE. Namely, The Undertaker at 133 days. Eddie Guerrero tied at 133 days. Kurt Angle, current Raw General Manager, at 126 days. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson at 119 days. Suddenly, an apparent one-off WWE champion finds himself in the rarest of WWE air. When Mahal pinned Randy Orton at May's Backlash, few took it seriously. And those who did believe it, that it was a cheap trick to penetrate the juicy Indian market. However, WWE continues to double down, triple down, and quadruple down on the modern-day Maharaja. We would have never thought that Orton, a WWE legend in his own right, would lose to Jinder in three consecutive pay-per-views. But he did. We never thought that WWE would deny the up-and-coming Shinsuke Nakamura's signature win and WWE's Monster SummerSlam. But they did. And now, even if Jinder loses at Hell in a Cell, he would have already accomplished something truly gratifying. Now he'll never catch Hulk Hogan's infinite run of over 1,400 days, and logic tells us that he won't eclipse Cena's of nearly 400 or CM Punk's gold standard of 434, yet he could possibly run past Randy Orton's best at around 200, or Seth Rollins' rookie run around 220. However, before you go too crazy, just know that there are other dynasties that are posted by some questionable names, like Yokozuna at 280 days, and Diesel at 358 days. We've been wrong to doubt Mahal and WWE's dedication to his character. Rumors have him beating Nakamura again at Hell in a Cell to ultimately face John Cena for the series' 17th championship. Uh, WWE building Mahal just to feed him to Cena? It makes all too much sense, but it's just too early to know at the moment. Regardless, Jinder is demanding you to take him seriously. And by now, we'd be foolish not to. So that's all, you know, as with many of these posts, it's, it's opinion. So, I mean, you can agree with it or you can not agree with it. Or, you know, you can sit on it and spin. This is a great chat! Wait for it. Oops. <laughs> Berm. Mine's bigger than yours. Ha <laughs> ha. Ooh, that's got a sting. Hey, what's up? This is referee Tony S. And you're listening to Ring Rust on CHMI. And this is Fabo Mark Jabroni. You are listening to uh, Ring Rust. Now a part of the Club Kayfabe Creative Community. You want to learn more about that? CKCCOnline.com Want to follow along the story I'm about to read from? Pop on over to uh, the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page. Although it may have once been the plan and seemed logical with Asuka's relinquishment of the NXT Women's Championship, awarding the vacated title to the winner of the May Young Classic no longer seems like the, to be the plan. While things change all the time, and as far as we all know, it was merely a rumor anyway, it's an unlikely scenario at this particular juncture. So, uh, I thought it was a, a, an interesting idea. You know, it, it would have worked, I suppose, because, you know, most, of, most if not all the women would have ended up on NXT anyway. Some might have been put onto the main roster, who knows, as uh, enhancement talent, as they say. It would make sense, though. Logically, all things considered, it would have made sense, unless they are actually planning on doing a women-only television or a WWE Network show, like 205 Live for the Cruiserweight Classic, and, you know, what they totally failed to do for the United Kingdom Championship, but, well, three times a charm, right? So, a lot of those ladies were just, you know, really talented, they're all rather talented, um, all rather attractive. Some more so than the average bear, as it were. And, well, a lot of them just had this really... Some of them had this real interesting look. Still, though, still nice-looking ladies, I gotta say. I mean, not to sound misogynistic, hopefully, but... I liked all of them in varying uh, degrees. So, a uh, little bit of a case of uh, not necessarily conventional beauty in some cases, but beauty nonetheless, so... You could almost consider them uh, mutant supermodels. Down here on my knees 
dissection brings me closer to perfection. Make the bottle, it's a model. Intravenous, a full bottle. Vision stable on the table. Infuse me with your label. Social branding, it's demanding. Denounce our club for Sunday. I am a mutant supermodel. Ducks on Gerbronology TV. So if you want to follow along with the next story I'm about to read from, pop on over to the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page, click on like if you haven't already, and scroll on down to Big Show's said to be undergoing ma- minor surgery for a slight hip issue. Claims are that his crash through the steel cage on Raw this past week was a way to write him off television. So here's the hoping. He's actually uh, going to recover fully from that. Sometimes you don't. It's you know, it's, it's the kind of thing, especially when you get older, you, you don't recover from surgery as readily as you were would if you were younger. So here's just hoping that he doesn't have to apply any aggression to get himself all healed up.
if, by some incredible space-time paradox, Randy Savage should ever be able to fight himself, he'd win. Period. And the Macho Man doesn't step on toes, he steps on necks. on Facebook, tinyearl.com slash rayrust. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Jabroni and subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Jabroni. Want to follow along so I'm about to read from? Pop on over to the See Tomorrow's Ring Rust Facebook page. Click on like if you haven't already, and scroll on down to Glam Slam, which is the team of Emma and Nia Jax. Uh, you know how I like making up tag team names. If, if you are a follower of me at all, you know that I like making up tag team names. So I call them Glam Slam, because they're both kind of glam, kind of glam, I guess, um, but Nia Jax is mostly the slam. Teamed up to defeat the team of Do or Die, D-Y-E, because giggle. I don't think that's their natural hair colors. Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks on this week's episode of Raw. As a stipulation that was put in place by General Manager Kurt Angle with Jackson Emma winning the match, they'll be added to the Raw Women's Championship match at No Mercy. Bliss will now defend her title against Banks, Emma, and Jax in a fatal four-way match. It's possible that the former Emmalina was placed in the match to take the loss. WWE likely doesn't want Alexa, Nia, or Sasha taking the pinfall in the match. Thus, Emma will probably be on the ultimate losing end of the bout. Which is too bad. I like her. But I may be among a small list of people who like her. I don't, not so much her in-ring style, but just... I mean, I was a big fan of her when she started and she was doing the bubbles and doing the hand wave thing and looked like she was having a ball doing it. And doing that awkward, not quite flipping over the top rope thing to get into the ring. And, and now she's a bad girl. And everyone loves a bad girl. So, I don't know. I'm kind of smitten, I suppose. So, I'm uh, starting to think she's the real deal. You're listening to Ring Rush for Ducks on Gerbronology TV. Well, there was the murder of a supervisor, nothing proven. I just thought it was better to move on. Pure electricity in my pants. Oh, my. Wow, that's a man kiss. You're listening to Wrestling Superstar, the Triple X Sex Express Sexy Eddie, and you're listening to Rick Rust, the one and only wrestling talk radio show. Yeah, I saw him on a, on the uh, Talk Steam Talk High Spots DVD that came with one of my pro wrestling crates. Sexy Eddie. He was only on it for like five or ten seconds, and it wasn't him actually talking, it was just a video clip of him. If you want to follow along the story I'm about to read from, pop on over to the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page. Click on like if you haven't already and scroll on down to Johnny Impact Talks GWF Arrival, The Miz, Ring Name, Origin, and more. Brought to us by HiddenRemote.com. GFW has welcomed a number of fresh faces to his roster in 2017, but chief among them is undoubtedly Johnny Impact, who debuted on the August 24th episode of GWF Impact and immediately set his sights on the top prize. Already, he's made quite the impression and should be a main event player in the promotion for years to come. This week, the author of this story, which is Graham G.S.M. Matthews, uh, had the distinct honor of making uh, talking to the current AAA Mega Champion as part of GFW's weekly cor- conference call to discuss what led him to arriving in, G- uh, in the Global Force Wrestling, how his former tag team partner, The Miz, has been able to reinvent himself and how he chose his current ring name. If you want to check that out, I don't really want to drone on about it, so if you want to check that out, go on over there to the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page and uh, click on the appropriate link, open it up, go read it yourself, and, you know, you can marvel at the fact that, well, at least, you know, he's maintaining, I guess, the, the tradition of being named after a wrestling TV show in some way, because now he's Johnny Impact and he's on Impact. Before, previously, he was Johnny Mundo, not so much... 
I guess, well, I guess if it was Johnny Lucha, he will be. But uh, Johnny Mundo, sort of, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a tip of the hat to the uh, to the Spanish speaking uh, residents of uh, Los Angeles who are big fans of Lucha Underground and who are actually running Lucha Underground. And, of course, the first one he started off with before he was even John Morrison, it was Johnny Nitro. Remember that? When he was, what was he to Eric Bischoff? I think he just kind of was there. Was he an assistant? I don't remember. He was just kind of there at WrestleMania 20. Hey, you, hey, Johnny, uh, Johnny Nitro, how you doing? So yeah, anyway, so he's just sort of there, and well, <sighs> oh well. Like me on Facebook, tinyurlcom slash ringrust. Follow me on Twitter, at Mark Jabroni, and subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Jabroni. Want to follow along the story I'm about to read from? Pop on over to the CHMR's Ring Rust Facebook page, click on like if you haven't already, and scroll on down to exclusive Finn Balor reveals how WWE changed him for the better. Brought to us by aliarabia.com and written by William Mullally. Last summer, WWE superstar Finn Balor became the first ever Universal Champion. After a storied career in Japan and a complete reinvention of his persona upon moving to WWE, Balor's years of hard work were rewarded. He was at the top of the company. One day later, he relinquished that title due to injury. I thought it was very typical of my career for when I got to the top for the rugby pulled out from underneath me and dropped right down under the bottom of the barrel. Unquote. Balor never thought he would reach those heights, he says, and he doesn't even know what he'd do up there. My whole career I'd been climbing, trying to get there and never quite getting there. When I finally got there, what are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there and chill? In his years in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Balor became the company's top foreign star, founding the still hugely popular Bullet Club stable. But coming to the global powerhouse WWE changed him into a different person and changed what motivated him to wrestle. Obviously, New Japan was something I was very passionate about at the time. I was very fully interested in what I was doing there at the time and what I felt like I was doing was just for me and no one else. Being in WWE, the term WWE Universe gets thrown around so much, right? But for me, that's a real thing. When you get to Singapore, there's 20 kids painted as a demon. I've never been to Singapore before. When we go to anywhere, when we go to Germany or any country we go to, there's kids that look up to you, that are wearing your face paint, wearing your t-shirts, making signs. The reach that WWE has through its television, its social media, and the WWE Network, that WWE Universe that we speak about, all the fans, that's what drives me now. Reaching those and influencing those people and to give them something to cheer for in a way. Unquote. It's a change he welcomes. Before I was wrestling for me, but now I feel like I'm wrestling for other people. And I feel that that's much more important. That's it for another show, kiddies. Check me out on Facebook, where you can keep track of all the news that's right on the mark. From around ringside to the latest concerts. See you at the shows. Later days. This is 93.5 CHMR-FM.